It's a very different system. It's not necessarily just the neurovascular component of the penis or the prostate or the nerves surrounding it or the pelvic floor. It's this concept of energy, which is called chi, which flows through the body, and the interplay of that energy with other fluids and an organ system and a meridian system where the acupuncture points are. We are back with another episode of the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. Today we are joined by Jillian Capodice. Jillian is a licensed acupuncturist practicing in New York City. She directs integrative urology and wellness at the Department of Urology at Mount Sinai. She's joining us today to discuss acupuncture, integrative medicine, and erectile dysfunction. Jillian, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Mark. Okay, so just to get our listeners like oriented a little more to, towards what you do, can you explain just a little bit what is integrative urology? Well, integrative urology, it's a specialty that encompasses the use of integrative medicine, which can be lifestyle medicine practices. It can be traditional medicine practices like acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. It, it's kind of a broad term. You, There are integrative urologists that are like conventional urologists who practice urology and are surgical surgeons um, that might practice some integrative medicine as well. But for me in particular, my degree is in acupuncture and traditional uh, Chinese medicine. I also do nutrition and herbology. Um, and I've integrated that into the field of urology. Just personally, I've been in the urology field for about 20 years almost now, I think. And I think there is a great place for integrative medicine in urology because it's a, it's a surgical specialty. Um, there are a lot of things that, that urologic problems and concerns and conditions that might not be treated with surgery that integrative medicine and lifestyle medicine herbal medicine, different approaches can benefit and it's sort of like a multidisciplinary approach. That's kind of a long answer, but hopefully that answers it a little. Yes. So I'm going to follow up on that because I think you know, many of our listeners are, you know, the United States, Great Britain, other places around the world that um, I'd say are more, much more of a traditional Western model. Right. So if you could like enlighten our listeners a little bit about what, what does traditional Chinese or, or Asian medicine, like what might that entail that would be let's say, a little bit more different or unique from, let's say, a standard Western medicine approach? Right. It, it does depend on where you are. So in the U.S., the practitioners that are that are that you might see are usually going to be like licensed acupuncturists, or they could be medical doctors that have a subspecialty. So if you're going for a visit to acupuncture or traditional Chinese medicine, it can entail different types of procedures, like including acupuncture or body work, manual therapy, um, and it can include also things like nutrition and herbal medicine. So if you go for a visit, it really will depend. It, it does vary a little bit, but each state, if you're in the United States, they most states, about 47 states or so, license acupuncturists, for example, and those will be your providers that you will meet with and work with one-on-one. -on -one. It's also similar um, in Europe. Okay, so so when we're talking about this like, holistic approach to medical issues, and obviously we'll we'll take this down to sexual function issues in just a couple of moments. Does that mean drawing on like multiple disciplinaries in order like to best serve a patient in addition to, let's say what we, we call over here, standard medical procedures? Right. I would say, yeah, that's a good question. In addition to, but because the way that we practice and medicine, the healthcare is in the U.S., we are like when I see patients, they are coming to me with, you know, a primary complaint of, say, erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation. They have a bi what we call a biomedical diagnosis. I'm looking at it as a biomedical diagnosis. As we get into the traditional Chinese medicine part, that being said, if somebody comes to you with a diagnosis of erectile dysfunction, and from a traditional medicine perspective, that could be five different types of patterns. So the nuances there are, and just the, the anatomy and physiology and the basic concepts behind traditional Chinese medicine are different, even though we're talking about treating the same thing. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Okay. Let's, let's talk a little bit about acupuncture. I have never you know, personally had acupuncture done on me, but I've had family members who have, and they you know speak very highly about the outcomes. But 
What exactly is acupuncture and what are the mechanisms by which it works? So acupuncture is the insertion of tiny little fine needles into the body. So they go into the muscle. So everywhere, basically, there are more than 350 acupuncture points on the body. So they're going into the muscle. And just like you have muscle, you have blood vessels that go through and nerves. And the needles are going in. And the body sort of sees these needles as foreign, and it basically does a couple of things. It causes a little local inflammation, and then it affects the nerves both locally and then also in the brain. And this explanation is sort of like the medical or the biomedical, the physiologic explanation of acupuncture. Usually when you go for a treatment, uh, the practitioner will select different points based on your complaint, your concern, and then the the pattern and, and meaning like how they treat or what the diagnosis is from a traditional medicine perspective. And you might get points, you know, that seem like they're unrelated to where you're getting treated. For example, since we're talking about erectile function, a lot of the points might be on a meridian that runs down the center or some distal points, we call them, on the legs that affect uh, nerves that affect the genitalia, for example, or the low back or the sacrum. And again, that's a that's a Western way to, to look at it. Does that part make sense? That part makes sense. What would be a non-Western way to look at it? The non-Western way to look at it, and the, the, the interesting, I think, that, that your listeners and yourself will find interesting about when you're working with uh, men and treating like erectile function and sexual health is just the whole different tenets of medicine. And that traditional Chinese medicine looks at treating erectile function or essence, we call it, or virility. It's a, it's a very different system. It's not necessarily just the neurovascular component of the penis or the prostate or the nerves surrounding it or the pelvic floor. It's this concept of energy, which is called qi, which flows through the body, and the interplay of that energy with other fluids and an organ system and a meridian system where the acupuncture points are. So it's a completely different framework to look at the human body, look at what symptoms are going on, and try to balance them out and to change, to enhance something that might be deficient or well something that might be overactive. Okay, I think that that, that would kind of help explain why you may be addressing points that seemingly are not localized or even connected to the focal area of treatment because you're saying that this is like a throughout the body type of approach. Uh, Correct. It's a full body type approach. There like from the biomedical perspective, when you're you you know, you probably have talked a lot I, I listened to a couple of your episodes about the pelvic floor and just about the innervation of the the genitalia both from like the internal aspect, like all nerves are running through the pelvic floor, they're running into the corpus. So you are, from a biomedical perspective with acupuncture, getting some of those nerves peripherally. And acupuncture kind of, it's it, it kind of helps the body do what it does best, which is heal itself and sort of like it's smart in that way. Like it kind of turns things on that needs to be turned on, it turns things off that need to be turned off. And we don't know exactly like the scientific all the scientific pathways by which this happens, but that is in essence often what it does to sort of enhance the nerve function, for example, or to kind of get blood flowing, even though you're not necessarily like needling the penis, for example. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Do acupuncture practitioners, acupuncturists, I'm not sure how they're referred to, generally speaking, do they do they know or have like an like an educated amount like an educated guess about where to be looking like to address you know particular issues in other words like is it known that like for erectile dysfunction uh an area around the left shoulder seems to be particularly helpful it really varies person to person now some i do think that the subspecialty of urology from an acupuncture traditional medicine perspective is not that common but the basic concepts in traditional Chinese medicine, one of the important things that sort of guides libido and sexual energy and reproduction is the organ system. And one of the organs that you might hear talk about 
uh, being talked about if you're thinking about acupuncture and erectile dysfunction is the kidney. Because the kidney, even though in, you know it in the body as these two things that sit in the back and mm -hmm. are filtering urine, from a traditional perspective, the kidney energy is like the root energy, the life force. And so we have a constitutional kidney energy that can wane or change over time. And it's one of the main things that's responsible, especially in a traditional Chinese medicine perspective for, for libido and the vitality that we're talking about. And you know, it's interesting as, as I'm hearing you talk about this, I don't, I'm obviously I'm just learning as we are in conversation here. So I don't necessarily have a great way to think about some of the information you're sharing with me because it is really fresh. But I do wonder when you begin to talk about like just the energy, I do start to think about like when you think about libido, I, I, I start to wonder about like state of mind and how maybe some of the acupuncture could be having also like a psychological or a psychoaffective impact that could help again, stir or stimulate, you know, one's libido, which may be a factor here as well. I, I think it's definitely a factor. And it is, it's just a different way to look at it. I think biomedically, when we talk about erectile dysfunction, obviously, we're really, we, we are talking about it as a neurovascular condition, we're talking about the blood flow, we're talking about the nerve supply. Finally, we're also talking about some of the upper things like what's going on neurotransmitter in the brain and that connection. Um, so in a way, traditional Chinese medicine is sort of if more focused on that connection, less so on the 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 pinpointing literally, you know, the blood flow in into the penis, for example, because those things come together, and that's the idea of it. It's that you need a a vital being to transmit, in essence, to transmit sexual energy, um, and that includes the whole health uh, aspects, not necessarily just how much nitric oxide is like going to the penis. So aspects like things that that can that one can work on from a traditional perspective definitely include, you know, moving the body, physical exercise as adjunct, your diet, their stress, either either overtaxation, having too much sex or not having enough. Like those are the concepts from a traditional medicine that I work with men about erectile dysfunction. Yep. And that kind of plugs into a lot of what we do. Um, you know, from the from the sex therapy and psychological end of all of this, it is you know a holistic component, much more than it is a physical component. But to that end, I was wondering if there is any known connection um, between acupuncture and improvement in blood flow, because erectile dysfunction is oftentimes primarily seen as a blood flow challenge. Of course, there could be nerve issues involved and whatnot, but right. the, the predominant paradigm has a lot to do with blood flow in and retention in the right. erection. Is there any connection that's known between acupuncture and blood flow? So directly into the corpus, not necessarily, but through the pelvic floor, yes. And I think that the, the pelvic floor function, control over the pelvic floor and affecting any nerves that go there are very important. I think also because I do treat men with all different sorts of types of erectile issues, I have worked with many men over the years that have had, for example, prostate cancer and had a radical prostatectomy. And, you know, when you're after you've had a radical prostatectomy, the nerves are healing. And there is there there are a few studies, not that many, looking at acupuncture and other like electromodulatory things that might help the nerves. So it's through the nerves that the blood flow probably happens. Mm -hmm. That being said, you can use other things for blood flow. You know, there's people have different opinions about just like, for example, like using a, a vacuum erection device or things like that. So directly to the corpus, not necessarily, but then through the mechanism of blood flow and energy flowing through the whole body, there's that connection as well. You mentioned before that there are some 350, I don't know if that number is exact, um, 350 points for acupuncture. You mentioned that if one were going for improving uh, erections and was trying to utilize acupuncture for that, that would not necessarily entail needles on the penis. Would there is there a genital point for acupuncture or is that off the acupuncture map? There is a perennial point, perennial point on the area below the scrotum, between the scrotum and the anus called REN1 or conception vessel number one. It's a point that I usually recommend people do some manual stimulation from their self for. 
um, because it connects this conception vessel and then this what we call the governing vessel. This is this one meridian that kind of like wraps around the whole body. And that those two meridians are very important in circulating chi. And also a lot of there are a lot of points like sort of like just above in the suprapubic area as well. But there are not traditional acupuncture points on the penis or on the scrotum. So Ren one is your closest one. Mm-hmm. Um, needling into the penis is is done from a, from a biomedical perspective when you're doing, you know, ICSI um, or treating peronies or something like that. Okay, but not as part of acupuncture, correct? Not as part of acupuncture. Okay. Now, are there um, like psychological benefits to acupuncture? Again, from a, a biomedical perspective, one of the things that acupuncture does is it releases neurotransmitters. It's, there's been clear evidence that it affects um, the endorphins and other small peptides. And then some of the other ones, again, it seems to have this thing where it turns certain ones on, certain ones off. So one of the things that it does is it activates the parasympathetic nervous system and gives you sort of a calming effect. Acupuncture very much stimulates the vagus nerve throughout the body. Usually, most acupuncturists will access that nerve through points in the ear or points along the neck where you have sensory vagus nerve connections. So when you get just acupuncture needling, a lot of people have a profound sort of effect of feeling calm and they might feel it during or they might feel it after. And it's that activation of the vagus nerve and then the release, the endogenous, we call endogenous because I'm not giving you neurotransmitters. They're being released on your own. They're being liberated by the needles throughout the body. So there's that effect. And that's one of the reasons that I've worked with many, um, usually younger men uh, on premature ejaculation, kind of calming down that sympathetic overdrive pathway. And sometimes just learning about that concept and understanding that it's another way to look at it um, and can help help people to kind of understand their bodies and then also maybe feel that sort of relaxation, feel that sort of, I, you know, people describe it in all different ways. They're just laying there very, very calm. They feel floaty. They feel energized, you know. So that, that neurotransmitter release is physiologically real. And I think that's definitely a way that it can be helpful. Yeah. So have you worked with men who have been experiencing uh, erection function challenges and through acupuncture or other, you know, holistic approaches were able to see an improvement? And if so, could you share like uh, an anecdotal story about that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think the the premature ejaculation example that I just gave, often getting more in touch with the mind-body connection, teaching some maybe some basic meditation or progressive re- muscle relaxation, getting some acupuncture to calm the nervous system down, that sometimes in and of itself can be very effective. On the other hand, say... Uh, someone that's a little bit older, that maybe the erection is not as rigid as it is, then some lifestyle changes, usually some dietary changes, um, using some herbal medicine um, can be very beneficial. So you can use that alone. It's not as strong as taking one of the PDE fives, for example, but you can also use it with one of them. Usually my preferred one would be a low dose Cialis because we know how that works, but it's not necessary. But it depends because everyone's case is different. So what is the reason for the, for, for, you know, what the reason is for the erectile dysfunction is, is, as you know, very broad. So um, it, it really can vary quite. Yeah. Quite. Interesting. Not, not everybody may be a candidate for that, but I, when you're talking about the right. nervous system, it's definitely something that we, we um, consider a lot, um, yeah. if, you know, person's state of stress, anxiety, um, and how that is impacting the physical body. And it sounds like acupuncture right. definitely has a role um, yeah. in being able to address that. Is there a particular profile of um, patient or ED type case that you've seen would be a good candidate for acupuncture or you know herbal treatments and whatnot? That's a good question. I think it's a bit broad to answer. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think uh, someone that is working with the anxiety component is would be a great candidate for it. But I do also think that somebody that needs to have some general health improvement 
meaning they they do need to work on their diet, their exercise, those sorts of things. I, I think is could also be beneficial. I also find that um, the just the concept of sexuality and libido, for example, I think explaining it through traditional Chinese medicine and the idea of less focus on just this hard, rigid, erect penis and more focus on the libido and the sexuality and, you know, the representation of what that essence is working with a person that's interested in that, I think can also be very helpful. So, but, so it, it's broad, but hopefully that answers it a little bit. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's excellent. So I'm going to wrap up with the following question. It's not really related to ED, but I think some of our listeners who, who oftentimes are looking for you know, ways to kind of add to their, either their maintenance uh, regimen, just general health improvement, or to find ways to even just improve function and sexual function would be just interested to know. And I'm curious. So uh, when inserting needles into the human body, how deep do these needles go? Does it cause like bleeding? What what exactly, what exactly is it like to be, to be well, needled? It is operator dependent in the sense that everyone is a little bit different but the needles the length of the needles the part that goes in is probably somewhere between a half an inch to maybe an inch and a half or so so they are going in a fair amount in it but it also depends on the anatomy if you're doing some abdominal points you have a you have much more place to go than if you're just doing a small point on your hand they should not hurt more than a pinch so you when you when you, the needles are much smaller than needles that take your blood. So you might feel a pinch, you might not feel it. There is an acupuncture feeling that we call a chi feeling, the chi feeling, which where you might feel like a little trigger point or a little grab of the needle or like a soreness or an achiness. That's a different feeling. It might feel painful to each, uh, to someone individually differently, but that's an activation of different nerve fibers. And technically that's a good acupuncture feeling. But in general, when everyone, when anyone tries to get acupuncture for the first time, they should not be writhing in pain. It is not supposed to be painful. Bleeding is very unlikely. You can get a bruise because, again, when the needles are not, they're not going to into the arteries or veins. They're going into the connective tissue. Got it. So it should not, should not be drawing blood in somebody who has maybe an aversion to uh, correct, correct. You know, needles or injections or whatnot. It could at least rest ashore that um, this is not meant to draw blood and it shouldn't be anything more than just a little pinch. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, Julian, this has been fantastic. I think it's just like so helpful for our listeners to learn about, you know, other, um, you know, treatments or, or um, complementary treatments to help kind of better manage health in general and um, certainly erections as well. So I really thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. 